When you think of Montana tourist attractions, Deer Lodge and the State Prison probably aren't the first places that come to mind. But if you're a history buff, Deer Lodge and its many museums has plenty to offer. MTN Samantha Harrelson takes us there this morning in part one of her special assignment series. We're here in Deer Lodge, Montana, the home of the Montana State Prison, which sits just a few miles outside of town. That prison was built in the late 70s, but the relationship between town and prison dates back a lot farther. It takes us to Main Street here in Deer Lodge, where the old Montana State Prison sits. The history behind these walls dates back to before Montana was ever considered a state. The moment you see it, it, you just have to know something about it. And the first time that you see this castle-like place in the middle of this little town with these big sandstone walls that are surrounding it, it's inviting and slightly enticing. It's like, come, come inside, see what I have to offer, what history lies within me. Did you ever see a dream walking? Well, I did. For inmates coming in, they knew where they were coming. Um, they had heard the stories about it, and they knew when they came through that door that this became the world, and this was their entire world on this side of the wall. Two men living in an eight by six foot cell. The area is very small. There is a cupboard in there. Each one had a half. There's one stool. There's no room. The saying is that when they walked through Tower 7, they lost their souls. And that's about the truest thing that can be said. You could no longer see anything outside of the prison because the walls were so high and it became its own hell on earth, so to speak. Seventy years of tension and overcrowding boiled over in 1959. Two inmates, Jerry Miles and Lee Smart, organized a riot in the prison, killing the deputy warden and taking 26 other prison employees and inmates hostage. After 36 hours, the Montana National Guard was finally able to secure a plan to free the hostages and effectively end the riots. They fired a bazooka into the tower Miles and Smart were holed up in, now referred to simply as the Death Tower. Not willing to be captured and held responsible, Miles and Smart committed a murder-suicide at the top of the tower stairs. Their intent was that it would be a bloody mess when the guardsmen got there. And sure enough, the second man up the stairs slipped and fell. Uh, didn't know what had caused it, but he reached down and felt something and put it in his pocket. About uh, four years ago, he brings me back a package and said, I've had this all these years and used it, and I think it should belong back here to the prison. And he dumped out of a bag into my hand the jawbone of Jerry Miles. Walking through the cells and some of the dark tunnels here at the old Montana State Prison, you can definitely tell this was not a happy place. Over 200 people, both prisoners and guards, died here. And when you talk to the people who work here, many believe a lot of them have never left. Often you hear things like, help me, or get out. And I've been told to get out. And that sounds kind of crazy, but um, once you've experienced it, then you have to say, there's definitely energy left here. And the things that went on here were, were so unpleasant that perhaps people just can't pass on to where they need to go. There's so much energy that's left here from the living and from the ones that have passed. So that's a lot of lost souls. This was the last thing that they saw before they died. With photographer Brandon Sullivan, Samantha Harrelson, MTN.